I think that um, you're you're a very talented individual that chooses their words wisely, thinks things from a 360 view, and is aware of different opinions and different. Hey, did you give me a time? Uh, I was. <laughs> I was. I was. No, I was actually swiping away a a text message. I thought you gave me a little boop, and I was like, okay, I'll give you a. Well. Oh. oh. Hello, all you buttercups and cupcakes and delicious treats that I just love to talk about. I love having you in my mouth to be like, love you guys. You guys are amazing. Tell my mom about you, my wife. It's just a pure joy. And, you know, for all of you newcomers uh, coming in my mouth, thank you for, for being here. Really appreciate that. That got gross. But hey, it's going to be a squeaky clean episode other than that because i've got a special guest eric schwartz an incredible comedian he was on the road with joe coy for a little while he also just headlines his own stuff doing his own thing and he's a special comedian he's unlike a lot of other comedians because he's bald no just kidding other than the being bald he is very talented with music and he has a lot of music music videos parodies and he even has specials where he integrates music and and sings and raps and it's really cool so i would definitely recommend checking him out on this podcast because you're on this podcast right now perfect opportunity it's like oh well i could really go for a starbucks i'm in a starbucks right now so might as well order me a frap i don't know who says it like frap but i want to meet that person but you guys just buckle up and stay in your seats for this extra special episode while you're there if you've got your phone don't forget to follow eric see him live he's going to be in phoenix september 19th that's this week this sunday coming up and he's going to be at the tempe improv filling your bellies and vocal cords with chuckles chortles guffaws the big old garden variety of laughter and so get those tickets they're going to be in the show notes And don't forget to leave me a review, subscribe, and tell your friends about me. Follow me on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast or S Satani. And guess what? All of you guys that went to Trash or Treasure on September 8th, thank you so much. It was awesome. An incredible first show. And the managers thought so too, because we got greenlit for another one. October 19th. Trash or Treasure. It's coming to a comedy club near me. I don't know if it's also near you, but House of Comedy, it's going to be incredible. Link will be in the show notes there as well. You guys, uh, I have been, you know, it's been a crazy, crazy couple of weeks with trying to put together the show, all these podcasts. So thank you for all the love that you're sending me. I actually, I almost died the other day. I ordered a salad at a work event. And I was masticating. And on the second to last, or maybe the third last bite of the salad, I, I feel something in between my teeth that's a little hard. I'm like, that's not kale. Maybe it's a really tough, maybe it's a subgenus of kale, harder to chew, but I decided to play it safe and just extract it from my mouth. And I'm right next to my boss and I pull out a screw that's about an inch long. And so, uh, I mean, you're asking, did you eat the rest of the salad? Of course I did. I mean, I already was tainted. So I finished the salad, but, and I, and my teeth were fine because I didn't, don't chew too hard. There's some sort of lesson in that or you'll get screwed. <laughs> there we go. Ah, what a beautiful dressing for that. And uh, so that's, I mean, that's a little bit about my life. Other than that, things are going splendidly. So I'm really excited for life just got a big old zest for it. I've got a hard throbbing zest for life. And I hope you guys do too. I hope you guys are hanging in there. Things seem like they're on the up and up. So I hope you guys are doing well. Big old hug to everybody and enjoy this episode. Hey, Eric, how are you? Good. Let me take my seatbelt off. Oh man. Unbuckled and ready to go. You, You like my, you like my studio? I love it. I love how there's a warning label right above you, too. Oh, yeah. It says, even with advanced airbags, all this bad stuff can happen. So, oh, man. Maybe I should put my seatbelt back on, actually, because I was relying on the <laughs> airbag for this. Oh, no. Oh, man. I was, 
I was getting ready to buckle up for all the laughter we were going to have because uh, I thought that was the warning. But it's it's yeah. an actual car. It looks it's good though. The car, interior yeah. looks very nice. It's like a nice uh, a nice gray, modern space gray. I think it could be called if it was an Thank iPhone. You. Thank you. Yes, no filter. Um, we we're here. This is the uh, 2013 Kia Optima. I don't want to brag like that, but I own it flat out. Own it. No payments. Very, very nice, Eric. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to brag either. I'm part of the Kia family. I have a 2009 Kia Spectra. It's like the little sister of the Optima, but all paid for. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, we, we're siblings here, and you know we're we. I like I like the family. I'll see you at Thanksgiving. <laughs> It's just the giant yeah. dealership, the Kia dealership. The gi giant dealership and people come around with um, every course on roller skates to your window. And then, uh, you know, it's like a car hop. Yeah, that, I love it. Two honks. The turkey was delicious. Uh, one honk. It could a little dry. Yeah, this episode brought to you by Chevrolet. <laughs> Oh man. Well, Eric, I uh well, I'll pump the brakes on the Chevrolet talk and accelerate on the guest Whoa. talk. And but I know I can switch gears nice. just like that. I was just going to say that. <laughs> oh, wow, man. this has been a car pun. Okay, let's get off the car pun. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, let's do this. And what what are we doing? We are on a comedy advice podcast where we're going to talk a little bit about my very special oh. guest, and then we're yeah. I thought the C. Uh, I thought the C was cars. That's what that's what I was doing. Shoot. Okay, so it's comedy. All right. Oh Note yes. Taken. Well, we do have a special car section. That's at the end or the trunk of the episode, if you will. So when we open up, they'll uh, yeah, we'll we'll have plenty of fun there. It'll be a good time, All right. but it's a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, by the way, and I'm your host. Joining me today, by the way, if you guys did not recognize that distinct, lovely, harmonious voice, it's comedian and um, musical genius, Eric Schwartz. Beep, 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 beep. Clap, 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 clap. Honk your oh, horns if you got you. them, everybody. Did you hear oh. it? Oh! I did. I, mean, I did. Yeah, it's a Kia. It's not that strong. It's a. It's a. It's I a, do. The horn. The horn has a question mark at the end. Like if you wanna. <laughs> it's. You it's wanna. almost like a little valley girl accent. Like yeah, we went to the mall. Yeah. Like get the fuck out of my lane. <laughs> I have to say, though, yours has a lot more testosterone than mine because mine is a little bit more. Ee, ee. So yours is oh. a little more manly. You know, you pay for that. Uh, it's it's an extra. It's a, a little bit of a deeper timber for the horn. And That's great. And the cool thing, and then people in the Walmart parking lot where I am, they all looked at me. So, um, yeah. So the reason I'm in a car, probably people are wondering is I was on my way to another podcast that I sh it's just too far from my house. And with LA traffic is it just, um, I couldn't get there. I was going to go inside and I couldn't get yeah. there in time with LA traffic. So I had to pull over into this Walmart and, um, and talk to you in my car. Well, let me just be the first to say that I am one, just oh so grateful that you're on the podcast in any location and I mean, you look, you look good too. You've got the nice button up shirt, which is great too. So it's, uh, I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. And it was so nice too of you to email and be like, heads up, I'll be in my car and everything. Some people, they just show up in their pool naked. And so for you to be so considerate was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know I could do this in my pool, but, but I'm, uh, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Oh, as am I. I'm I'm actually in my pool right now. It's a little kiddie pool. I can't afford the real thing. I spent all the money on the <laughs> Kia Spectra. But um, speaking of spending money, uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about you, Eric, and your upbringing. I know you're from Thousand Oaks, California, a little ways outside of LA. And then um, you ended up 
after you your bar mitzvah money, you ended up spending that money on some DJ equipment and becoming a DJ. So I wanted to ask a little bit about where that passion, where did where did that get ignited? Your passion to be able to DJ. Um, you know, it came from um, when I was a little kid. Uh, break dancing was really big where I was. I, Thousand Oaks is like the suburbs outside of LA, but we still got some of the LA radio stations. And one of those stations was um, called K Day, which is still on the air today in another form. But at the time, it was uh, an AM radio station, and AM signals travel further than FM signals. And we would get it in Thousand Oaks. And it was the only station, I think, in the country that was playing hip hop music or rap music, you know? And so we were, we were, uh, my brother and I were really into it and break dancing was a thing. And so we started break dancing. And so I was into that music and my dad had a, a clothing business where he, um, one of the things he did was he sold at the swap meet on the weekends. The swap meet that he sold that was called the Rhodium. And if you look up in the NWA liner notes of uh, the first album, uh, NWA and the Posse, they thank Rhodium Records. And that's because Rhodium Records was a, a record stand that pretty much like was one of the birthplaces of LA hip hop. Dr. Dre used to do mixtapes um, that would um, play out of that you can get them at the rhodium at rhodium records and it was really the only place you can get it. and that's kind of where like the epicenter of like that movement of la hip-hop happened and that stand that record stand rhodium records was maybe two rows over from where we were and it would play all day and we already my brother and i already loved that kind of music so i'd go over there and i'd spend all my money that i would make that day that my dad would pay me on records and I started getting this collection of records. And at, when I had my bar mitzvah, I was like, I'm going to get uh, turntables. And then my brother and I started um, doing parties. And we had all the, you know, like we, we knew like the coolest music because we were getting it from there. So those before the internet, we were like, kind of, we could become tastemakers because we had, uh, you know, um, Rhodium Records feeding us, feeding us the, the best advice. Oh, so that's, man, that's just oh go ahead i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off yeah like a no we have a little like, delay no we, we have a little delay but um yeah so like that's kind of where it came from was like you know my childhood kind of rode the wave of uh break dancing and um hip-hop in the 90s and late yeah. 80s actually yeah oh that is, that is so cool and i know that you've been able to i was gonna say sprinkle but i think more of a drizzle or even inject a nice filling into your comedy <laughs> as you've had i i've seen um many bits from your special surrender to the blender where uh i think my favorite bit that i saw was baldy locks um but oh really yes <laughs> Great, great bit. You've also, I mean, throughout everything I've seen, um, you had the 30 songs in 30 days challenge. I think you had Jason Mraz featuring in one of them. Um, I particularly enjoyed, uh, what was it? It's shitty to do shitty things to your friends. Um, yeah. <laughs> Shitting on your friends is the shittiest shit you can do. Yes, yes. Oh, that's, yeah. that's it. That's it. But yeah. um, I, and even clips of you at, at the the comedy store and everywhere, you've been able to, in this very unique way, be able to integrate your passion for hip hop and music into your comedy, which I think is really cool. And um, uh, well, let me stop there because uh, I also wanted to ask when when did the comedy passion come along and, and was that independent and then you decided to merge them like a, a delicious apple pie or um, was uh, were they always just planned to be together? Yeah, you know, it's, it's weird because um, I, I really loved Saturday Night Live when I was a kid and I loved like Eddie Murphy was my favorite. Um, you know, when, when we were kids, those dirty words and stuff were, were really, um, you know, taboo and, and you couldn't hear them everywhere. And so guys like, like Eddie Murphy and Andrew Dice Clay, all the kids would, would, you know, 
sneak a tape or a um you know uh, a tape of that and um we'd play it and we would laugh and like i would just i memorized uh eddie murphy's uh delirious and i and we would do bits of it all the time and i i knew sketches from saturday night live and i loved robin williams was one of my favorites and i would um just basically emulate them that's the first step of creativity is imitation so I emulated mm-hmm. them and, and um, my friends like really encouraged me. They're like, you should be a comedian. They would always say that you should, you should be a comedian. And I, I always, I always thought in the back of my mind, like I don't have my own material. And so, um, yeah. So th- then I started writing my own stuff, like, you know, at, a few years after that, but, but uh, yeah, I kind of envisioned what would be the most fun show I could do. And it was that combination of the um, comedy and the music. And so I was like, I want to do something totally different. Like, I don't, I, I've, I've never wanted to be like other people, um, you know, on stage. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do something crazy and see if it works. And I started doing it and people loved it. So I, you know, it's what it's, it's like me being true to myself, you know, because those are the things that I love to do. And uh, I get to tell my stories and my opinions and my, you know, um, all that stuff through that, like, vehicle of, like, comedy music. So I love it. That's that's super cool. And it's so cool to see you do that throughout a lot of the different works that you do as well. I know um, you had also started Podcast the Musical, which was an absolute delight for the oh, two thanks, episodes man. that I, that I listened <laughs> yeah. to. And um, I, I hope you do pick it back up now that hopefully things are hopefully no more variants are going to rear their their ugly head. But um, with yeah. with Joe Coy, who I know you've also opened for um, and, mm-hmm. and gone on tour with, which was really cool. That episode was amazing where um, in all the episodes, it seems like very high production value and a lot of work into it. But you would speak <laughs> with your guest and then you would just take a something that they would say and create a song out of it. I think one was about being a cool uncle and, <laughs> and talking yeah. about uh, that, but it, it was, it was really cool to even put that twist on, you know, my as as mellifluous as my voice may sound. I'm sure it bores a lot of people. I'm sure some people might go to sleep to my podcast. So how can they go to sleep when you say words like mellifluous? They have to, <laughs> They have to immediately look that up. That's an exciting word. Oh, that's you, a, that's see, a, that word has thirty milligrams of caffeine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like I love that. I have a, a very jolty vocabulary. Mm, that yeah, one was molecular. less impressive. <laughs> yeah, uh, molecular is it it, it it sounds evil and magnificent at the same time. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, okay, shoot. Now I've just was thinking about mellifluous and did you ask me a question? I don't remember. Um, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I oh. did. I think I was just showering you with praise. It was just a, oh, a rain shower. Yeah. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Uh, okay. So, but podcast, the musical, I will tell you, you mentioned, um, uh, you mentioned 30 songs in 30 days before that. So yes, you're dead on. You said that podcast musical has a very high production value, and that's why there are only two episodes of it. Because I knew I was painting myself into a corner when I started it. I'm like, I'm gonna do this podcast where I go to make a do an interview and then make songs based on the conversation, and I'm gonna make music videos for every one of them. I'm gonna do this, and I'm never, I'm not gonna be able to finish. And so, even with the pandemic, I've still been producing it. You know, um, the 30 songs in 30 days most of those are songs that will be in the podcast when I release the episode. So I've got about five to nice. five to eight episodes that are like almost ready. One of them is Jason Mraz. One of them is Frankie Quinones. One is this DJ Felly Fell, who's really huge out here in LA. Um, Jamie Kennedy is on it. So I've got some great episodes and I, I really want to release it. Whether or not I will continue, will remain to be seen like if it people really latch on to it and uh and encourage it and tell me to keep going i will but that idea of making songs based on what i'm what i'm doing that's kind of what i do on stage 
so like it's kind of th- this podcast is really like the format of what I do on stage anyway because I'll do stand up and then it will go into a song that is based on that that topic you know what I mean so it's yes. it's really like yeah. the same kind of format um but I'm still gonna I'm gonna continue to do that if I do a different podcast that's a little easier to produce or if I do this this podcast the musical but thanks man I you you did your homework like you described it perfectly you described it mellifluously. <laughs> oh my! I think I might cha- I might name my child Maliculous when it comes out. Although I don't know, it does, like you said, sound kind of like a villain. So they might turn out to be a bad apple. But it, it's we'll like see. Maleficent, right? It reminds me of Maleficent, which I love that That's movie. What it, that great movie, great movie. Oh man. Um, well, I also wanted to say, I know that you are getting back on tour. You're going to, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. You've got a show in Phoenix and also in Flagstaff. What is it? Uh, yeah. I had the show dates, the, the tour dates in front of me. The Yeah, the uh, 18th eight- September, I'll be at uh, Orpheum in Flagstaff. And then the 19th of September, I'll be at uh, Tempe Improv. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. How has it been getting back on stage? Have Well, have you done it yet? Or have you, um, is, I see you have some dates on the tomorrow or the third? Are those going to be the Yeah, first? I've got some Southern California dates coming up as well. Uh, but yeah, nice. but I did a, I did a little touring May and June and it was great. Mm-hmm. Like that was my first, um, like going back on the road officially. And I did maybe like seven or eight shows in different cities and they were amazing. Like it just felt so good to go back on stage. I've been doing more local stuff um, uh, since then. Um, But yeah, now with everything that's going on, it's a little bit more, um, you know, I'm not gonna say that I'm not um, concerned, but I'm I'm trying to be very careful and getting, I'm vaccinated, I I get tested once a week. Um, but you know, I just hope everyone stays safe and healthy and come, the people that come to my show are healthy and, you know, we don't have any problems. And I just, uh, I, like everybody can't wait till this phase of things is done and we can get into a place where it's not, you know, disrupting everything. So that's, yep. well, hold, hold, on, on. Some, hold on. Someone's calling me. Oh, no worries. No worries. While you um Okay, I'm back. I'm uh, back. Oh, cool. I was I was just gonna yeah. pull out the compliment hose and then just give you a little spray. But uh, uh, I was gonna say that very, very nicely and articulate articulately said. And I I just think uh it made me think of this is going all the way back to twenty twelve, but I think you had made a song, a parody of Gungam style, Obama style and uh, oh wow you went back into the crate <laughs> oh i dug deep i i drove my little yeah. kia spectra into the schwarzverse <laughs> and we went we went as as far as <laughs> there was gas for in the tank you got good gas mileage <laughs> but uh no i mean I, I think you do such a good job of i think your comedy obviously very good i was cracking up at everything that i had seen i think your um, like in this case with this song, I thought you also did a very good job of pointing out pros and cons of both sides of the spectrum, which is something that I feel like is very rare, especially now. I feel like it's more polarized than ever, but uh, I think that, um, you're, you're a very talented individual that chooses their words wisely, thinks things from a 360 view and is aware of, different opinions and different hey did you give me a time oh, i was some, <laughs> i was i was, no, I was actually swiping away a, a text message but it i it looked like i touched your face like can i touch your beard i, th- I thought i thought you gave me a little boop and i was like okay i'll give you a well oh but yeah you, you know what that didn't come that didn't come at the right moment because i'm like man you really you really know how to how to like uh make somebody feel feel appreciated and seen you make me feel seen oh you know oh good no that's what i i do aim for that kind of stuff i actually studied broadcast journalism 
And the reason I didn't go into it was because uh, one of the reasons was that I couldn't keep my opinion out of it. So I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I thought, but now that doesn't matter. Everybody does that. But, you know, at the time I was like, I, I took the ethics class and I was like, I can't hold myself to that. So I don't think I should do this. Uh, so I probably would have been good for it. Um, uh, you know, with those kind of yes. ethics, but, but, uh, yeah, like I, I, I definitely see that when you're trying to convince anybody, seeing their side is part of it. When you're trying to make a point is what I'm saying. When you're trying to make a point about something, seeing the other side is probably the most important part of, you know, making a point. So, um, mm-hmm. so yeah. I do. I do. I like, I want to recognize both sides. If I'm doing something, some, you know, some kind of issue or whatever, if I'm doing something where there are two sides, um, cause yeah, it talks about the whole, the whole picture. So yeah, thank you. My journalism professors would be, they should tune in. I'm going to send this to them. Oh, <laughs> that is, that is excellent. I, all right. Well, let's send it to CNN and, and, and Fox news and, um, all the news channels and be like, this is how you do journalism guys. You become a comedian. <laughs> I send all of the episodes to them. I just, I'm trying to get out okay. there. So yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Well, Eric, we're going to wind down with some advice, answer a couple questions that I have plucked from the oh. Reddit advice column. But before we do that, I like to, I'm an inspirational quote guy. So I like to get filled to the brim with some delicious inspiration. And uh, yeah. I've got an ins- I've got an inspirational quote in my pocket or maybe in my hair. It's somewhere. I'm going to find it. But while I'm searching for it, I like to ask my guests if, well, if you're a quote guy, Eric, and if you have any inspirational quotes that you tend to tug when you're feeling down, when you feel like you need some inspiration. There's so many. Okay. I'll just tell you a book that you need oh. to check out. And I tell everybody this, I probably said it on like 50 podcasts. Um, but the artist way it's, I'm probably not the first one to talk about it. It's a very popular book. You don't just read it. You do it. It's a workbook. It will help you mine your past of why you uh, think or are blocked in some creative way. And uh, it will help you um, change your mind to get over that and to pursue what you really want. It's a spiritual guide to creative freedom. Uh, that's the, the uh, log line. And um, I've done it about five times. I'm doing it right now. And it like, you, I always say, if you do that book, if you actually commit to doing that book, you cannot stay stuck in the same spot you were stuck in. Um, if you just really commit to doing the book, um, it's a lot of work, but it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so, but I'd say one of the, I can't remember who said it and I'm paraphrasing it, but I really love this quote. I think it was like Henry Ford or something. Somebody problematic. I don't know. Um, sure. but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it did something good. He said something like, um, you can't, uh, you know, I, I'm going to butcher it, but something like, um, you can't sell somebody on what you are planning to do, only what you have done. You know, like only what, like you have to complete it. You can't just sell yourself on like your idea or your, um, your I, I, see I'm, I'm butchering it but i gotta look it up no. i think it was henry Thor, but but it's like you can't um that's you have to actually do something you know like you actually have to follow through basically on following through and then gandhi always says uh you know be the change you want to see in the world and i think that's a good one too so yeah well, those are two good first ones. off that was that was excellent you exceeded you um Underpromised and overdelivered, I would say. Oh wow! Book recommendation and two yeah. quotes. Well, well, I mean, one quote and then one kind of mangled, paraphrased quote. But we'll take <laughs> yeah. it. 
it still counts. But I'm actually good. like I, doing the exact opposite of what the what the quote says to do is like the, the quote is something like <laughs> be about it, know what you're doing. And I'm like, well, it's kind of like you got to do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh hey no judgment here okay and and to make you feel a little bit better i have got a quote and it's actually not by any person whatsoever it's by a robot and the robot's name is inspirobot and i just went to inspirobot.io and the website Whoa. has this machine that uses ai to take some of the wisest words known to man it maybe it took some from gandhi uh as well as what was the book the artist's way the art way yeah the artist's way the artist's way the artist and it just takes the artist just way the artist like artist apostrophe s way it's by julia cameron you yeah. you did a fantastic job on articulate by the way the pronunciation on a s- s- is so difficult for me. I just kind of like it. And you, you, it just, it was a wonderful you know, set of breaks and stops. You, you dude, you warmed me up with molecules. You really warmed <laughs> me up. <laughs> you really oh, got man. my glad, S's. Tight. Glad, glad to, yeah, definitely glad to, this is, I feel like that's the one thing I need to, to do. Um, better is i feel like i have almost from an arizona our accent is neutral but i think i've got lazy lips or lazy tongue so it's just not kinda... at all no Bro, okay. i was just i was gonna after this was over but i'll do it now compliment you on your uh your dude you got a broadcast voice what are you talking about you got a big voice you got a big voice believe in it Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Oh, Tongue twister. Well, they, I, I, that's so daunting to me, but I'll give it a try. I, you know what? I'm going to read a Dr. Seuss book to my daughter tonight, and we're going to try little, little Moleculus and I, we're going to have some, some good tongue twisting times, and I'm going to own it. I'm going to be like, time for bed. And she's going to listen to me this time. But yeah, I don't have a daughter. That was just for the bit. But anyway, this quote from a robot. <laughs> It, uh, <laughs> well, I'll read it to you, Eric, and then you can tell me if it means anything to you. Um, okay. This week, Inspirebot says, rock music, it's of no value. There's no more. That's, that's actually it. Oh, I was like, when's the inspiration coming? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Le- yeah, Wait, I, le- I was left the- pretty unsatisfied by that. I, you know what? I, that is actually inspirational to me. That quote is very inspirational to me, not because of the words, but because it comes from a robot and it sucks ass. You can't replace us, robot. Oh, I love. Yes, exactly. Humans one. You know what I mean? Robots zero. Give, give me human inspiration because, you know, AI is taken over and pretty soon it's going to be attack of the clones like the movie and um we're we're still ahead if that's the quote the robot gave you we're still ahead i i love that you spent two minutes and 30 seconds trying to piece together a quote and it was way more way more beautiful (laughs) than this made more sense yeah my uh jumbled (laughs) quote made more sense than a robot that the people spent years creating Oh my gosh! I by the way, it was a beautiful quote. I f- I feel so bad for for uh, Josh and Anya, but that was you're you're no, such a you nice got, guy. You you're got such me. A good you person. got me. If I had my phone, if I weren't using my phone for this Zoom, uh, I would look up that quote and get it perfect. But I don't know. I can't because I'm I'm on my I'm on my phone. Oh, got it, got it. No, no, it's okay. I I didn't hear everything you said because I got. I think there were some excuses in my ear, but um, you know, it's okay. Next time nope. we can uh, get it right. Oh, okay. So we've got our first question, Eric. This one is from the Reddit advice column because I now I feel like we're nothing but inspired, so we can move forward. Uh, with okay. These. Yeah, yeah, we're in it. The, this first one is: um, I asked a girl out, and she said that she needed to think and wants to talk about it more tomorrow. I'm assuming this means the answer is probably a no. She seemed genuinely stunned by the question. 
To hopefully ease her tensions, I told her that if the answer is yes, I'll be overjoyed. But if the answer is no, nothing will change about our friendship. How should I handle this in the next day? And did I handle it properly? Any advice is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay. First of all, delete your question. And never... <laughs> because she's if she sees it she's gonna think you're a stalker uh so delete the question stop thinking about it and move on that's the honestly and i'm i'm that guy i am that guy who dwells on it and what i've learned from my mistakes is that you just gotta put it out of your mind if it happens it happens you can't pursue you already laid your cards on the table move on now you be chased. You chased, but now you're being chased. Oh man. You know what I'm saying? What a good like what mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go let, ahead, give 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 that person a chance to um to chase you or to to meet you in the middle. Cause you know, it if it's all one one what she told you is basically a soft no because she likes you. She likes you as a person but doesn't want to hurt your feelings. Yeah. That's how you got to take it. So love yourself enough to not keep pursuing it and know that you're, you're, you love yourself enough and you're confident in yourself enough that you don't need all, you don't need that. If it wants to come to you, then it will come to you, but you don't need it because you're a complete person yourself. How about that? Oh, how <clears throat> beautiful. Low clap beautiful. that shit. That was that was absolutely incredible. I don't think it could have been answered any better. I loved the. I was just, I was just talking to myself right there. Okay, so <laughs> I, that's how I, that's I, how I got that to that. I, I was looking in the rearview mirror and just telling it to myself. That's uh. Yeah. Well, hey, it, it spoke volumes. It spoke beyond the mirror and into the souls and hearts of all the listeners, and hopefully this person because. If the fact that you asked this person out, good for you, man. You went out of your comfort zone and you did it. Yeah. And it, the soft no, it, you nailed it perfectly. A soft no is what it is. It's just an inevitable, it's like you got stabbed in the stomach. You're going to die, but it's not going to be now, maybe <laughs> in a day or two. So I would say <laughs> let, let that relationship yeah. or what you think it would be die and start thinking about other things including how cool of a person you are especially for going out there and asking for what you want so right exactly so you're not going to die from the wound you're going to die from infection but (laughs) yeah yeah i think that's a good advice what we're trying to say here is you're going to die so you might as well enjoy the little life you have left that's really what we can do here Exactly. So we're going to move on to this next All question. Right. Last, last one. It's uh, It says, how do I stop picking my nails? I have had this terrible habit forever. I don't chew slash bite my nails, but I tear the tops off along the skin around them with my other hand. I've gotten used to my fingers just permanently being in pain, but I've been very stressed lately and it's gone to another level. Is there anything I can do to save my poor fingers? Oh, um, I'm going to suggest hypnosis on this one. Uh, I've heard about it and you can, I, it's, I don't know where that comes from. It's a psychological thing, right? Um, but I think I'm trying to seriously, uh, answer this question and there's really no reason to do that. Um, (laughs) you stop, just stop. She, by, just, stop ripping your nails off this person doesn't want to do it because they're in pain so they like the pain or they think they deserve it right so they internalize yeah. they're inside they're like i don't deserve to feel good so they're ripping their nails off i mean i don't nailed know it. can you get like nailed it you know what move on you just said the right thing uh, well, that might be the end. Uh, and you and I, we're just two cuticles. So I think we answered all the questions great and polished them beautifully. So, Oh, my God. You're a pun machine. 
Oh, we've oh just God. scratched the surface, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I, I'm gonna put oh. my finger on the end of the record button, but before oh I do, god. I'm trying to even think of one. You just got five on me. <laughs> you, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, you, you gotta got, hand you it to me. Is that what I gotta hand it to you? Um, <laughs> you got your finger on the pulse. Um, you, uh, hey, hey, that's yeah. good. That's good. But you already said finger. So, um, hey, when is this com- <laughs> when is this when is this po- podcast coming out digitally? Um, uh, it's it uh, it's gonna come out uh, very. Sh- wait, wait, did you want one more? Did you want another finger? Oh wow, yeah, I shouldn't have asked that question. Uh, Sorry. They call me the doctor of fingers, cause man, I cure. Oh! Oh! oh. Shit! Oh shit! <laughs> I feel like all of the puns that I did were, it's like this little house of cards and then yours just blew them all away. Cause that no, one, I don't think so. oh, I that was, was like, this one's that, a stretch. This one's a stretch. No, no, no. All of mine were like in spy robot quotes. And then yours were just coming in like Henry Ford, Gandhi, just nailing my, well, anyway, anyway, yeah, oh, but yeah. beautiful. Eric, you're an absolute treasure. Thank you so much for coming Dude, on the pod. Give me nuts. While oh, we're on the hand, yeah. nuts. Give me nuts. Yes. Yes. It was Stephen, it was awesome to have you. How many people call Abs- you Steven? You know? Oh, Stephen. Dude. So so many and thank you for inquiring and also getting it right. You nailed it and I also Eric I also wanted to ask, where can people find you? What have you got going on? What do you want to plug? What are all the beautiful things that these these listeners should know about? Well, if you want to just know one link that you can find everything is ericschwartzlive.com. That's my website. Love it. E-R-I-C-S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z-L-I-V-E.com. You can find all my links to my Instagram, which is Eric Schwartz with three E's, E-E-E-R-I-C-S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. It's pronounced Eric Schwartz. And then um, <laughs> Facebook, I got got it going on. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm starting TikTok. It's not it's not popping, but it, with your guys' help, it probably could be. Um, your yes. most of your listeners are in Arizona, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so I will hope if if you're a um, comedy advice podcast listener and you are at my shows in Tempe on uh, September 19th at Tempe Improv or uh, Flagstaff on September 18th at Orpheum Theater. Come up and say that you heard me on this and um, yes. I'll give you nux in honor of the, uh, yeah. the, 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 nail, the nail puns we just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you guys, don't be shy. Yeah, and if you're not in, um, in Arizona and you can't come to the show, when you put this out on social media, when you post the clips, you gotta like do a um, drop a nail pun on us, like one Ooh, try to I one like up that. us. You know, I like that. That's that's yeah. beautiful. I mean, like I that? think you and I, you and I, pretty much destroyed the pun game yeah. for as far as nails yeah. go. But if if anyone, this is the challenge. If anyone can beat us, uh, there's no prize except maybe no. our honor. Yeah, but that's okay. retweeting. Be- we'll re we'll like, favorite, and subscribe. Yes, we will do all those, all of the good things, the bouquet of social, so, Honestly, social bounty. Do it for the love of puns, dude. Do it for the love of puns. Thank you, thank you. you know? that's what that, for the that's artistry. my passion, and that's the end of the episode. Wasn't Eric Schwartz just the warts? And by like a wart, I mean an incredibly interesting thing not like a disgusting thing because eric's a sweetie pie he's amazing and you should see him live he's coming to phoenix september 19th so see him link is in the show notes follow him follow me if you haven't already leave a review subscribe follow me on instagram at a comedy advice podcast and s Sutani. and trash or treasure october 19th yeah another show another one so, God, Stefan, you were all business here. Man, I almost turned myself on. I was just like, do this, do that, do that. It's so commanding. So I'll leave you guys with a little joke. Knock, knock. 